Ireland, no London more press. Uh, we changed that around for no particularly good reason. Um, tonight's agenda, we've got Paul here talking about uh, Body Press 1.5, the new release. Um, and we've got Jeffrey, he's going to be talking to us about selling music with WordPress and WP e commerce. And then Shocker, where is he? Is he in here? There he is. In the corner, he's going to be talking to us about the Solar plugin and how that can improve your search and your WordPress site. Um, after that, we're just going to head off to the pub. The pub is around the corner. It's called the Anchor Tap. It's just on the way to Tower Bridge and then hang a left. Um, so last month, it took a little while to like, clear this office, and we do need to get it cleared. So instead of all hanging around and chatting in here, if we can move it to the pub straight away, that would be that would be great. Um, lots of people know their way, so just follow someone. Um, and then thanks again to Headshift for hosting the event. And Emily, do you want to say a few words about Headshift? Uh, very quickly, I'll <laughs> say that we, uh, we're a consultancy and technical development company that uh, help businesses use social tools to be awesome. Um, that's us in a very brief nutshell. We have an amazing website that you can go and have a look at on any device. It's great. Um, and just obviously the obligatory, we're um, always interested to work with cool people, so if anyone's looking for new opportunities, please. If anyone wants to log on to the network, um, I'll just quickly, if you can just pass that around the room, um, you can log on. And we're using, what is it, Etherpad? Etherpad, yeah. Can you shout out the URL for that? Uh, yeah, if, uh, so it's uh, pad.headshift.com um, <coughs> Sept, short sept. <coughs> cool. Um, so we can all kind of share and collaborate with some notes if you, you want. You could to race it up on the whiteboard behind you. What's that? You could race it up and. No, could do. Yeah. <laughs> there... These aren't permanent, are they? No, markers. So what is it again? If pad. Uh, pad, pad dot. Pad. So I had shift that point. WPLDN. Cool. Right. So, without any further ado, over to Paul. Thank you. Right, okay, so hi everyone. <coughs> Paul, I'm one of the uh, core developers of the Bunny Press social networking project, and we had a 1.5 release yesterday morning. So, today's, uh, you know, this evening session is a real great opportunity to come and spread the word and go a little bit about what's new in WordPress 1.5 and, and sort of introduce some of the highlights of it to people who maybe haven't heard or haven't seen it before. So we call 1.5 and we call it Mbadi and Mbadi's is like allegedly the, the first pizza restaurant in uh, NYC and the reason and it's the WordPress team use uh, Neil has all these, all these jazz musicians now these jazz names and you know, whilst we think jazz is cool, and barbecue is pretty cool, uh, myself, John John Jacobi is a uh, lead developer, and Boone Gorgeous, who's another developer with us on the core team, we really, really love pizzas. So we thought we'd name them after. I suspect the future releases is going to be 1.6, can be a different pizza restaurant. Pizza Hut. And that would be <laughs> uh, I hope maybe by the time we get to like version 5.1, we'll run out of good places and end up with Pizza Hut. But, so that's, so we call it Lombardi. Um, so that's great. So our current, so I will quickly say our current version before yesterday was Buddy Press 1.2.10. Um, that was obviously a lot of a long way down the 1.2 line, and um, that came out 1.2. Then that main release must have come out over maybe two years ago. So the fact we just got the main version out now says we've got some problems with releasing these things agilely because you know waiting like 17 months for release isn't very cool. So so leading so where's Buddy Press 1.3 or Buddy Press 1.4 or, or the middle ones? And we thought we spent I've got some numbers in it, but we spent so long building this new version of Buddy Press. And so much work and so much time, we've had so many patches from the community and all this great feedback. It sort of 
that's a, a 1.2 to 1.3. It's a bit like, I don't know, Windows 2000 and Windows 2001. It doesn't really give a sense of how much work's gone into it. So we thought we'd bump the version a few numbers to 1.5 to better reflect that we've really missed one or at least, may, at least one, maybe even two major releases. And uh, as a happy coincidence, and this wasn't planned, uh, I've been told that the, the early WordPress releases which we went on forever, so long that everyone was running drunk. Yeah. So it was one point five. Sure. So yeah. So mate, were you involved with WordPress? I was. Yeah. One of those long term man. Yeah. So um, I understand they skipped some of these early one point releases and just jumped to one point five. Yeah. Is what I've been told. So you know the way the success WordPress has had is good. Good for both. They decided to do the same thing for WordPress. So, WordPress 1.5, it's been in development for like 17 months, easy. Um, it's an epic release. And if you, we, all, we all know the internet, and there's some really great things like uh, uh, great memes and all sorts of YouTube, and maybe even Facebook and Flickr, really great epic stuff. And you have epic fails. So I'm going to talk about WordPress's epic fails. So it took us about 17 months from when we branch from 1.2, let's get working on WordPress you know, 1.5, about 17 months ago. We cleared on our track, uh, which is our sort of bug and task uh, tracking system, we cleared over 800 tickets, and the majority of them, maybe 600 or so, were bug fixes, and the rest were enhancements. Um, and this is all for what? The releases, um, which is why it's taking 17 months to finish it. Um, and it's almost of the type of bugs that we've that we found whilst we're sort of making 1.5 really really good is um but it's some sort of legacy uh, le legacy code and le old old ways of doing it. So when WordPress came out, it was for WordPress MU 2.7 about three maybe four years ago now. Um, and then after WordPress 3, when the, multi the the MU got merged into it. BuddyPress, we've got to release that quickly so we could let regular WordPress installs use BuddyPress. And that, that overnight shot the number of users and plugins and themes available for BuddyPress by making it available to that wider audience. And so as we're doing 1.5, we were like, we you know, we come across all this old code dating back two or three years, and it was like, WordPress, the, you know, forget all the, the admin bar, the new admin backend, custom post headers and all the backgrounds, all the really amazing custom post ups, all the stuff that's happened in WordPress core, WordPress has pretty much missed out of all of that gross stuff because <coughs> this version has been in the open for nearly two years. So we took through and cleared out all sorts of uh, you know ways web how WordPress loads, its memory footprint, what order in the WordPress pipeline, you know, we were loading too early. We load in the right place. This makes us a better scissors in terms of how the plugins technically architecture um, both like using the up-to-date best practices of WordPress core um, and some of the other uh, main, uh, larger WordPress plugins. So, and then WordPress 1.5 is epic. And this is because we WordPress is really several plugins grouped into one. So when you install BuddyPress, it gives you a social network out of the box. Um, you know, like for example, activity, friends, group members, extended profiles, and come with the theme. And with these, you can set up a social network. Uh, it's sort of the, the sort of the, the slug line is sort of like for your niche community. I was like schools or um, scout groups or office intranets is a sort of niche social network rather than a normal content on like Facebook or, or Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, and so WordPress 1.5 is epic and we had so many bugs because there's so much code. We got like uh, about nine or so different parts of WordPress that if we wanted to we could split off into nine different plugins. They were all Mostly, and they all work separately. So, if you install BuddyPress and you don't need friends, but you want to let people private message you, you can just turn off friends. That's fine, and, and you can still use the messages. And they're all interoperable. 
and, and they're not dependent on each other. We've had seven or eight hundred bugs because when you've been fixing stuff, especially the, uh, about a year ago, we were fixing it in one place and we like fixed something in the activity stream and then we broke the activity stream for a group, you know, on that page. So we had to go into the groups component to fix it. Um, so we had so many bugs and it's taken so much time to really go through and um, really make 1.5 common leaps and bounds and it's because buddy press is really big. Uh, what I will note for the people who use buddy press before we split out the settings component, it used to be bundled in what we refer to as the core component, which is like the flux capacitor of buddy press. So we broke out the settings into a separate thing. So if you and settings are like you know front end change password username, that sort of very, it's sort of fairly minimal because you just pulled it out from core and we've like reshuffled some code and that was in a mems component or, or into friends and vice versa to split them out. Um, so there's a few changes but it still works the same. Uh, for developers, something that will be of key interest is uh, we've had a new class, this is a uh, we started doing this in January and it took about three months to do. Uh, it's a BP component class. And these are like these bullet points are really like the benefits we get from it and the reasons why. Because to register uh, a new like maybe a jobs board or something in BuddyPress, and there's the common things you want to do like <coughs> make sure there's a page title for it, give it a URL, add it to the main navigation. Add it to the WordPress admin bar, add profile settings for it. And that sounds easy, like, okay, five things, you know, that not too too bad, but you, you had to add about, I don't know, 12 or 15 separate hooks and filters in your plugin just to get BuddyPress to recognize it. And we had to do this in core, so we had all sorts of duplicated code, and because you know, it's a community-driven project, people contribute patches. Some of these, com uh, the core components in BuddyPress got out of sync, so some were written better than others, because we'd, maybe someone spent more time on it, and maybe something that no one liked, you know, or didn't get that much uh, support or focus, got left behind. So we've abstracted all the, sort of all the inputs and all the outputs, and what you have to do to set up a new custom component, and like a new, a, a, a plugin that adds significant functionality to BuddyPress and it's a BP component class and to get one working it's about maybe 9 or 10 lines of code it's easy and it's consistent and um, this isn't something you're just tacked on for like third party developers we rewrote all the BuddyPress to work on the BP component <coughs> class and I think you know just, to, just an aside here because we're beginning to look at Use a word for a use PHP's object oriented model. <coughs> if you wanted to extend a groups component but change it in some crazy way, to, but keep most of groups, you don't you don't have to now like copy and paste and like do a, do a bulk rename as tags. You can just extend the BP groups class and like add your custom stuff on top of it. So if you need to think, oh well, I want groups, but maybe I want, I can't think of an example, but maybe you just want to add a new page or I'll tweak something, whether this is for a plugin or whether it's for a site you're building, you can just extend the core BP groups and you pick all the bug fixes and enhancements as we add it in. So BP component took us about, we started in January, took us about two months, two to three months to really go through all of BuddyPress and get it um, up to date. And if you're updating your BuddyPress plugin or building a new one, please use BP Component because uh, <coughs> maybe in 1.6, 1.7, BuddyPress is where, you know, where it's the right idea to do, we're going to start moving things to custom post types. If you're not a developer, this is all Greek to you. But the way BuddyPress does certain things regarding capturing URLs like I want the members, you know, forward slash members to go to the BuddyPress members component. Um, is similar, you know, when we get to custom post types, we're going to throw all that stuff away in heat. Custom post type and WordPress course is going to take care of it for us. But, so we've built sort of the appropriate framework in <coughs> custom post types into 1.5.
So when a time comes, and it may be it's time for your own plugin to also migrate to custom prototypes in a future version of WordPress. Again, it's going to have that consistent framework. So you sort of built some, built the building blocks so you can see in the future as a developer, if you want to be ahead of the game, you can think, okay, in a couple of, you know, in a three or four months, I know what I need to do, or I know where I need to start looking to get my BuddyPress plugin up to date to use custom post types. So that's very important. So if you're building anything other than a small tweak to your site, use BP component, it will save a lot of time now, and it will save you a lot of time in the future. <coughs> so, uh, again, for developers, we've added lots of PHP documentation. We sort of, if you if we fix a bug or a new function in the code, we document it, both inline and specifically with PHP doc. So, um, people who who run uh, you know, PHP doc generate source code can can build this, and it's not complete. But there's quite a lot of it, and especially for the new important things like the new BB component classes, because they were all they've all been documented, both here and on our codex as well, actually. Um, but compared to BuddyPress 1.2, which effect, compared it had like zero PHP dot, zero documentation. So if you wanted to figure out how BuddyPress worked on the hood, you have to stick your head on the hood for a few days to figure it out, and then you, know, you can do something with it. We've normalised file names and folder structures on the plugin. Again, this is only really useful, I suppose, if you're a developer or you need to find out how BuddyPress does something. And so, because BuddyPress is so large in so many directions and so many files, it's like, where do I start looking? Where do I start looking? So by normalising these file names uh, across the components, um, make it more easier for people to sort of We'll do some exploring and discover where they all are. And it's also helped us sort of have a better overview of all the bits of BuddyPress core to check it's in the right place. And we and earlier versions we took a lot of the sort of uh, lazy methods to store in data and like common like, login details and common stuff across all the different pages and templates in BuddyPress. We've removed all but one global variable now and the uh, remove the constants. Uh, the backwards compatible so if you've got all sorts of constants set up to use advanced settings in WordPress, they should continue to work. Um, but again, we've built wrapper functions and filters, so it's, it's, a, it's a nice little approach to the code. Something for people who use the website. We've updated BP default. Um, and the best place to see BPD for is to go to testbpd.org, which is testbuddypress.org. Um, and that's sort of a live demo site. It actually contains not only the latest version of BuddyPress, but also the latest version of the BPPress plugin. That's a test site. So you can, if you've got a WordPress.org account, which I guess many of you might have, you can log in and play with BuddyPress, set up a profile, set up groups. You know, you can also jump across into the forums and learn how BPPress 2 works. And it's, it's like a sandbox, um, and it's super helpful for like getting to see if this, you know, is this plugin right for me? Um, so the best place to see the for, for BP default is in test BP because I haven't taken any screenshots. Um, we've made, we've freshened up all the colours. We've got, we have some really dark blues, a bit like the slide background. We've got some really nice, uh, much brighter blues, giving it a much fresher look. We had all bits of orange and uh, orange buttons and grey buttons and um, uh, blue buttons on like next to each other. There probably was some method to the madness originally, but it made BP default visually hard to understand and hard to um, sort of for for a regular just a visitor to your site to understand how you need to do it. And the reason it was a bit sort of all slapped together was when it was. When BP default in the one pop daily press one point was built, the idea was this year we need to showcase everything that Buddy Press can do. So we're gonna throw everything into this theme and make every we're gonna make the groups component look like the members component. And we figured, okay, people will see what's possible and then go away and create their own thing. But what's actually happened is people have been, in my opinion, quite almost they look at BP default and they think and this is what Buddy Press needs to look like when that's not true. So, and, we, and uh, 
I I keep googling stuff now, and I keep finding people running body press on the, for like uh, support groups, all sorts of things, um, which is great because I found my answer and they're using body press. But now we're using the default theme, and so these guys have thought, okay, we use the default theme because we don't want to buy, pay one, or we don't have the time or, or money to to build. <coughs> We're going to make BPD4 much better. So we now think BPD4 is really a theme that you might want to use for your live site, for your actual site. Um, uh, something that a good example, uh, something else we've done is we had about three different ways you could discuss, uh, three different ways of, of participating in discussions <coughs> in BPD Buddy Press. So you have forums, have blog post comments. Uh, which is WordPress, of course, and the uh, comments on the activity stream, and they all look different. And then this is mad because they're all, it's all discussion. Your users, and there's a text box, and they write stuff, and they hit the button. Functionally, they're the same. They shouldn't look different just because they're in different bits of the code file. So we've made all, and this is something that I was really pleased with the way it turned out. We've really gone through all of it and made sure. But the comments, you know, once you realise conceptually in a new website, you can this is a comment box and you can post to it. You're not they be able to go to a totally different page of your site and figure, hey, this is also a comment box. It might be different under the hood, but ultimately who cares? And I think and uh, and uh, I think it's always worth remembering that although if, if you work in technology and build websites uh, you know, every day, there's Millions of people out there who are barely ever used a computer or barely ever used a <coughs> website. So making the comment forms look the same across the default theme might not sound a little bit less impressive to maybe some of you people, but I think it's going to be really key for people who want to scroll the site and also less potential user base, which is I think the vast majority of the internet. You know, better documentation, it's almost as good as uh, 2011, and that's very well documented in line. So if you're a theme developer, you can dive in and understand what's going on. Um, so BPD4 is almost as good as 2011 now. Uh, we meet the .org theme standards. And uh, this is if you want to host your plugin on a WordPress.org forward slash extends forward slash themes, where it's like a free theme repository. And there's some like guidelines, and there's this team of people like you know, there's, there's a big checklist and they go, does this theme have a header, does it have comments, and on this page, you, you know, can you comment on a page, and you know, is there a comment for... Really quite intense checklist, the body press failed the most of them, <coughs> which was <coughs> embarrassing, because we had people split <coughs> child themes, which sort of you puts on, jumps onto the top of body press without uh, BPD for without duplicating it off the code. And their themes, and they'd made good changes, and all their code was fine, and they were getting rejected by the, the .org theme review team because of buddy presses, you know, the parenting of BPD for failing. And that was, to me, pretty embarrassing that we're preventing, we're annoying someone because having their thing listed because, because buddy, it relied on a buddy press theme which was not up to standard. <coughs> And because we've had a 70 month development cycle, we finally caught up with <laughs> really old stuff. So, so you can have custom menus, which has been in WordPress for donkey's ears. You can have custom backgrounds, which has been in WordPress for even longer. And headers is probably even longer than the background, so you can have a different header for all your different pages. Um, all these little things, but we've really gone through B BPD for the fine tooth comb, and it's a theme that we hope. Um, Think it's much, then you know, people are going to enjoy using it and will be happy with using it out of the box in the same way that a lot of people use 2010 and 2011 because they came with WordPress and they look good. That's sort of the direction we want to go in. Um, for administrators, um, we've uh, revised the admin user interface for the extend profiles. And this is the place where you can set up the text boxes, drop downs, all the select boxes, you know, sort of date of birth type boxes, all of this. And you the, see, and that's the type, and you get the title and the description. And a lot of example, and then when you save these, and the user registers on the site and edits their profile, you have like a name box, you can maybe have a favourite football team, um, you might have like a biography box, like a free text form. 
And this is both makes up the registration and the user profiles. And you can have groups of these groups of these profile settings. Um, and before it was sort of uh, we had a, a workable interface. Not just it looked ugly, yes, but the UI for it was pretty bad as well. Because if you delete a profile field, say you've got Facebook Football Club and it's uh, and it's a text field in Bad Press 1.2 and it's in one like the default profile field group and you actually want to decide if you've got so many football questions you want to create a profile field group just for football questions. So you go to move your favourite football team question from the default group into your football group and you can't do that. So then you delete it in the standard one and then add it to the extended profile and that works. Except by deleting the field you lose all the data or your users have entered from that field. So if it was something big like a biography or you know any I don't know, I've seen all sorts of different paragraphs of text and they take the time to type it all out. And the admin decides, hey, I, I want this organised differently, and they click the lead. It's like, and all the data's gone. And that was, ba that was bad. And so we didn't, no one really hit us with an act hard enough to get this dealt with soon, really. It was surprising. I guess not many people move their profile for this UI once they've set it up, because we haven't had too many complaints. But now it's all drag and drop. It's all gone web 2.0. You can drag and drop fields, rearrange the order within groups, from one group to another. And as a bonus, we don't delete the data this time. Um, and it looks like WordPress admin page. We've gone through all of the WordPress admin pages to bring it up to date with some of the recent design changes in WordPress UI. Um, I think quite there's quite a few with the uh, quite noticeable the recent update in uh, WordPress 3.2. But also before that. Um, on, and when 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 a styling for tabs like on the uh, on the themes <coughs> page, really uh, got more prominent. Um, so we so we, we wanted to make sure that the admin pages were more consistent style wise and functionality wise with WordPress core, uh, and we've done that. Um, I don't think I've got a slide for it. But installing BuddyPress and upgrading BuddyPress is easier. Uh, because, because if you install BuddyPress, you have to install it, check your, set your permalinks to some of the default ones. You've got to pick a theme, then you've got to go create your profile fields, and then you can choose to turn whatever you want. You do, if you do more you groups, you can then turn it off. That's five different admin screens that you have to go to to set up BuddyPress. And unless you knew where all five admin screens were, it was a bad experience trying to find all these different admin pages. So you've got sort of an upgrade or an install wizard and it same page and it walks you through you know, pick a theme or a download one, you know, which type of permalinks do you want? So and you know and, and we ask straight away, do you want to use the groups component and have a description of what the groups component is for? So you can understand what BuddyPress does as soon as you go to set up and install it. And page mapping. So we associate our BuddyPress components. Uh, for example, like a .com forward slash members is going to be like a list of your members. We call them directories and members directories. Before BuddyPress was like we like listened out when WordPress was loading. We like listened out for the URL. So WordPress is like over here loading the page, and all the URLs looks like com forward slash group is that a page you know maybe we better go and create a database to check it's a page or a post but Chris is like hey guys stop no 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 don't don't, don't look at the database we 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 take care of this forward slash groups we look after it we kind of kill wordpress a bit and just sort of like push it away and not listen to it um and this was not great because it was sort of all a new the implementation was messy we were interfering with wordpress's load order for the templates and all the magic that happens behind the scenes when you type in URL and how how WordPress decides which page template to load up. Um, we were sort of um, so all of that stuff before is all my stuff. I said it's now a more elegant approach to custom content. You could also say the way BuddyPress used to do it was a huge hack. So it was really messy so um, it's much better. And um, and the way the page mapping works, also when you set up BuddyPress, it's like 
you need to create pages and there's a form to do this essentially for you if you so choose it, so it's easy. It's like, I want my page that says like, if I create a page called groups, and a page called groups to the WordPress groups component. And this wants a lot of work to undertake to make it work. But it allows, it's a more, and the way we hook into WordPress, it's load order and uh, intercept the URL and, 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 and handle it, it's much nicer. That's for easy custom URLs. Something you couldn't do before was rename the members page to, to like buddies or something. Maybe you had like a buddy networking. You want to call them instead of friends, you don't send up the URL looking like friends, you want to be like buddies. You could turn the other we had a we had a constant so you could open your config file, add an override in, and it changed some of the links on BuddyPress. So some of your templates were like you know, pals or friends, and some of them didn't, they were like hard coded to like the default template slugs. So that's messy. So you built template tag functions to make sure you're always getting the right URL. You can nest pages under each other. A good example is if you go to BuddyPress to Automator, look at the main nav, there's a rightmost one's one called Community. If you hover over it, it drops down, it says Activity Stream, Groups, and something else I can't remember. But, and you click on Activity Stream, and the URL's not. The URL is, you know, yoursite.com forward slash community forward slash groups. So by page mapping, we massively improved the way Buddy Press dealt with this under the hood, but it also gives you the really for the first time a meaningful way of being able to change the URLs and structure them hierarchically for, for whatever purpose you want. And again, this is another sign of some of the stepping stones we've got towards moving things to custom post types. WordPress's custom post types take care of the URL uh, management all for us. So this is sort of another good example of this halfway stepping stone between where you used to be and where you want to be in the future. Um, we're going to support BBPress 2.0. It came out the same day with this Buddy Press, which was <coughs> no coincidence. Um, and it, Buddy Press is, and it's a really up-to-date modern forum software. It's built by the same lead developer, John, as, uh, as who, work, who works in Buddy Press. Um, and I like that because the new version of BB Press, when it's that being built, has not gone in the direction that's incompatible with the way Buddy Press uses forums. It's um, having that same sort of lead role on it, makes sure they're sort of going in the right type of directions. So I'm plugging BB Press too, basically. And we got it comes with custom post types, and it comes with a pretty new approach for plugins uh, to add new template files for themes for your site. And if you want to know how BuddyPress theme is going to be in, in maybe six months time or so, a couple of releases down the line, check out how BBPress does it. Because I can guarantee if you install BBPress 2.0 on your site, and you've got might have a custom theme, it will, it, you've got really good chances of it fitting in nicely with your theme. It's not going to load all kinds of crazy custom CSS to make it look like some sort of standard version. It fits and integrates really nicely into your site. And unless you want a theme it page specifically, you don't have to copy any new template files to your theme. So there's less sort of brain drain and management on worrying about what you've got. So we've added the buttons at the back in the Buddy Press to let you download and install BB Press. And what it does, it, it, about, it integrates Buddy Press. So you have site wide forums. Because forums in the old version of Buddy Press were restricted to a specific group, which was the original idea, and I think there's still good use cases for that. But something we heard loud and clear was we want a site, we want one forum where anyone can talk about it, just like a Miss Gaz or a general forum. I wasn't really sure of making some sort of Miss Gaz and a soft topic group to get a Miss Gaz and a soft topic forum. It wasn't a way to do it. So BB Press 2 gives you. So on forums, and it integrates into the BuddyPress activity stream. So when you post a comment or a new post, you pop in your activity stream, which is sort of like a waterfall list of what you've done on the site, like uploading a new profile picture, made friends with someone, 
it will also pick up all the buddy all the BB press 2.0 <coughs> so it integrates nicely. Or it, it doesn't at the minute integrate into groups at all. Um, but you know that is gonna happen. It's gonna happen sooner rather than later. And it's quite possible to run both old buddy press uh, old BB press and new BB press at the same time. So if you want to group forums, you can. If you want to site wide you can run that at the same time. Our own bed. <clears throat> Our own on these techie terms and the services of being able to copy and paste the YouTube link, put it in a post, hit publish, <coughs> and you've got a YouTube player in the middle of your screen. Um, that's sort of fairly standard and expected. And I think Our has been in WordPress since 2.9 maybe, if not around then. So it's been in there for like easy two years. Um, so we've got Oembed in our activity streams, our forums, and our private messages. Uh, you just, any plugins that extend WordPress's uh, Oembed or uh, embed capabilities, or BuddyPress, or just, you know, we just we use the same code, we listen now, we take advantage of whatever you've got. So you can really time with, uh, with you know, for some days of finishing this and putting it on test BP, and this is our test site, people realised we were, they were pasting in YouTube links anyway, just to see what would happen. And all of a sudden they start getting players and they go, whoa, we've got YouTube on our site. And that is really good. If you've ever tried to run one of these sites, it's unique. you don't want to link out to Facebook all the time, you don't want to link out to YouTube. You want to keep people doing something on your site, even if it is just watching YouTube, because essentially they are still on your site and they're still in that community and they can still participate in it. So we've, had, we've tied our, our embed into the core from the activity streams, forms and private messages, the policy media for our sites for more engaging news experience. Um, and it's a small thing, but something looking at that big impact. So now was sort of a whistle stop tour, some of my favourite parts of BuddyPress 1.5. I hope I've got time for a few questions. So, yeah. Uh, how many lines of code have you written? Um, <coughs> Past, I don't know about <laughs> but it's substantial. Um, <coughs> we must be somewhere in the tens of thousands of lines, uh, just because you've got so many different bits. Are there any large uh, sites running on BuddyPress at the moment? Uh, I mean, always you know the largest little site is that uh, that is running on BuddyPress is at the moment. I'm well. That's that's very hard because we don't have unless site had been saying we've got a pretty big BuddyPress site, and sometimes we get. We hear from people saying we run and we've got so and so users, but it's confidential. We're not meant to allow to tell, so we can't. Sometimes we hear from a big site. Um, I work for the Telegraph. We have a Buddy Press site. We've got above eighty thousand users on that, so I don't mind sharing it. The Buddy Press org site has somewhere in a region of fifty-ish thousand user accounts, and they're active. And by active, they probably read the forums once a week but they're still flagging the user account, still trying to be reasonably active for the type of site Buddy Press the Walk is. Um, we have another quite good site um, in uh, all the way in New Zealand. And it's uh, ooh, Operation HQ dot, might be code NZ, I'm not sure. But it's a site built for the New Zealand government, um, a specific in their sort of de defence and their land defence department. And it's an engagement site for youth for like we see recruitment videos like join the army on television and all, and all, all the armies and the governments do a lot of PR work nowadays to attract people to join the army and Operation HQ is the site for New Zealand use to join the land defence force um, it's still going strong it's very custom built but it looks uh, really nice um, and that, <coughs> the, that was built the actual client for the government was Saatchi's and Saatchi's agency and we, you know, we understand from our last contact with them that it's actually we're real happy with the number of, because I don't have numbers. But a good thing about BuddyPress, if the site hasn't been customised too much, find whatever the main member's URL is, because in the default theme there's a tab that says how many user accounts there are on there. So if someone hasn't customised it much, then it'll be a member's, like a page in the navigation, and you'll have like the user account after it. So that's a sneak away for most sites, find out how many users there are. One at the back. Okay, well, um, uh, I'm using uh, BuddyPress for like school sites, like uh, kind of like the generation. And one of the things I was wondering, well, two of my priorities are keeping it simple 
and UPN like private. And I was wondering if there was a way to remove RSS feeds. Ah, uh, good question. Um, I submitted a, a yeah. suggestion to track, but I'm not sure if it's going up. I'm sure it's in there. We've got we've got a few hundred or thousand tickets in there, but it is possible to remove RSS feeds. You know, uh, program to program, we just unhook a few actions. If you post on the Baypress.org site this evening or tomorrow, I'll keep an eye out for it and I'll dig up the codings and you just need to copy it into a file. Uh, I was also wondering, uh, what do you think the future of Baypress is? Uh, what do you think you're working next? I think, I think things we need to think about is how we connect all the buddy presses together. Um, well, sort of when we've got all these islands of social activity and social network, not just in buddy press, but in like Twitter, you might have a Twitter widget on your site. There's, I think there's a lot more we can do to tie this all together, uh, to, to make a more compelling user experience. And we certainly need to start thinking about fun ways of um, uh, letting users manage their data, both from a privacy, but also how they add friends. I love Google Plus because of the way you add friends to circles, and you've got the spin graph. That's awesome. It's like a million times better than buddy press is equivalent. So I think I think we need to think about long term and we are really how people use the site and how people manage their data and or how sites want people to manage their and, and what we can do to, to sort of make that better. Any other anyone else? Yeah. yeah. Um, buddy press and BB press both have a user profile page. Yeah. If you have both of them active, do they kind of magically merge together or do you actually end up with two they're, profiles? They're magically separate. <laughs> <laughs> um, purely because BB Press 2.0 is the first release, first real, it's a rewrite of BB Press, it is the first release and if you wait to get everything you want in one release you end up waiting 17 months <laughs> like we did for Buddy Press. So yeah there's two user profiles um, there's also issues where you get them out the box and they both try to nab the, the forum slug for their various different forum pages. Um, there's a good level of integration at the minute, but yeah, I think at the minute you get them to set the profiles. And, but, but the good thing is, same lead developers, so yeah. John and Guy, us, both Buddy Press contributors and BB Press contributors, how we're going to manage that together. And, and, what, and I imagine one of them will turn off. Yeah. The, main, yeah. the other question is with the BuddyPress um, user uh, profile um, checkboxes in the background, is that still using a custom table or is that using user meta? No. <coughs> it's all custom tables. The tables in 1.5 are the same as 1.2. I think we added a meta table for forums or something. Um, but no, it still uses the same table. Um, it, and this is the sort of thing we need, we're sitting down now to think about would profiles make sense as a custom post type? Would, would it make sense to that data in the main post table? Some things are, like the activity stream, which is basically comments, so that's, uh, open, that's a closed door already. But, yeah, it's the sort of thing that's the best way. Will, if you're asking, will BuddyPress ever not add any extra tables to your database? I think that's never going to happen. There will always be some tables, but now we've cleared the last two years worth of development, we're sitting down and think, how can we store the data? And hopefully no one will ever notice, except if you've got a large company or database administrator, that the database has got a lot less weight in it. We better actually move on to the next presentation, yeah. guys, because we're running a wee bit behind time. So if you have any further questions, you're going to be at the pub later on. Of course, yeah. Good stuff. So thanks very much. Yeah.